वेलकम टू नेटबुक स्टडी एंड दिस इज द डेली करंट अफेयर्स एनालिसिस ऑफ 27 जुलाई 2024 एज यूजुअल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज आर्टिकल्स फ्रॉम हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर एज वेल एज इंडियन एक्सप्रेस न्यूज़पेपर अलोंग विद दैट प्रीवियस इयर्स क्वेश्चंस आर आल्सो गोइंग टू बी डिस्कस्ड लेट्स गेट टू द डिस्कशन ऑफ दिस द फर्स्ट आर्टिकल इट इज रिगार्डिंग गवर्नर एंड लेट्स सी व्हाट एग्जैक्टली दिस न्यूज़ आर्टिकल इज टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड देन आई विल गिव द बैकग्राउंड इंफॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग गवर्नर एंड व्हाट इज द न्यूज़ इज दैट न्यूज़ दिस आर्टिकल इज टॉकिंग अबाउट Kerala, the state of Kerala, it has the government, it has approached the Supreme Court and it has filed a petition against the working of governor here, the office of governor. And what is the uh, context here? See, Kerala, the legislature, it has passed a seven bills. In this news article, it's very precisely they are mentioning about these seven bills. So we'll stick onto this seven bills. So they have passed these seven bills, and these bills were sent to the governor. So governor, he did not take any action on these bills for almost two years. After that. he has sent these bills to the president and president has rejected these bills now kerala government it is not happy with that there are few aspects you need to focus here the first aspect is with respect to the delay see uh, kerala is telling that governor what was the necessity to keep it for two years if he is not happy with the bill he could have sent the bill back or he could have uh, said no to the bill but he has kept it for two years and it clearly shows that you are delaying the legislative process see we are elected by people people have uh, supported us so we have the authority to make laws but by keeping these bills under its ambit governor is disrespecting the people's mandate this is one thing by delaying and the second aspect is see you can uh, refer bills only if there are issues issues there are some issues i have been mentioned in the constitution see if there are any bills which are talking about state center relationship and if there are any bill which is talking about judiciary like uh, high court and supreme court or if there are any provisions in the bill which are against the constitution see these kind if there are these kind of conditions then only you can refer these bills to president but here kerala government state government is telling that none of the aspects none of the contents in these bills deals with any of these aspects then what was the necessary to uh, reserve these bills to the president here again kerala is not happy with the working of uh, governor somebody thinks that it is working against the interest of state government and the third aspect is after president has received the bill president also rejected these bills see governor he acts as an agent of center and the even president president works on the aid and advice of the uh, council of minister so both governor and the president they acts as the representative of center so center role in the working of state government working of the kerala government it is extremely visible now and finally this all these aspects center interfering in the working of the state government and state legislature it goes against the concept of federalism in our constitution so kerala government clearly it is not happy with the working of the governor so it has approached supreme court to take action against this particular situation or to find a solution so if a governor is against the legislature and is working as an agent of central government what can we do and how do we how do we handle this situation this is the question posed by uh, kerala under the supreme court and supreme court has accepted this particular uh, petition and it has it is going to see this from the perspective of federalism so this is what this news article is talking about but along with that we need to have an understanding with respect to governor also so from polity perspective let me give you guys background information regarding governor also governor he is a nominal head of the the nominal head at the state level and you need to remember the articles articles 153 to article 162 deals with the governor here and who is going to appoint the governor it is the president obviously on the aid and advice of the uh, council of ministers and qualification he should be a citizen of india and he should uh, completed at the completed the age of 35 years and tenure is not mentioned in constitution neither the tenure or not the grounds of removal that is also not mentioned so on the whole president take a decision with respect to removal of governor and let's see the powers and functions of uh, governor here and when you ever think of functions there are four functions you need to remember one is executive function and second is legislative function third is financial function and finally it is the judiciary fun function now let's see all these functions see all the decisions taken every executive action taken Uh, in that particular state is taken in the name of governor only and he is going to appoint the chief minister and on the advice of chief minister is going to appoint the council of ministers and is going to appoint the advocate general state election commissioner state public service commissioner vice chancellor of the university all of these appointments are made by governor these are the executive power and let's see the legislative power 
see every bill it has to be become act only with a signature of governor so if governor gives assent then only that bill becomes act only and with respect to this bill uh, whatever the bill passed in state legislature governor has four options here and what are these four options either he can say yes to the bill he can give his assent or he can so say no it means that he can withhold his assent to the bill or he can return bill to the legislature, legislature again with some recommendation or he can reserve the bill reserve the bill to whom reserve the bill to the president and this article is talking about this art, uh, particular aspect only so along the, these are the legislative power along with that he summons prorogue and dissolves the state assembly and some of the assembly state assembly they are bicameral it has a legislative member of legislative assembly member of legislative council so he is going to appoint one by sixth of a legislative council members also and he has that authority with respect to disqualification of mla but this should be based on the opinion given by the election commission and he has the right to address to the legislative assembly and he is going to place various reports on assembly so these are the legislative functions and let's see the financial powers financial powers see money bill in a state they have to be introduced only with the recommendation of governor and along with that even the grants the recommendation of governor is very much important and it is mentioned under article 203 and state finance commission is constituted every five years once by governor only and he is going to make sure that budget is placed in the house uh, of legislature and this is a financial power and finally judicial power judicial power with respect to high court see high court judges are appointed by president only but in order to appoint this the consultation process is going to happen with with the with governor so president is going to consult governor with respect to appointment of high court judges and with respect to district judges all the control is in the hands of governor with respect to appointment as well as the transfer complete control in the hands of governor only and under the judiciary power there are pardoning power also and this pardoning power it includes pardon reprieve respite remove and commute and there are few articles you need to remember article 161 it deals with the pardoning power just had a discussion pardoning power and article 201 it talks about the reservation of bill to the president and article 213 article 213 deals with the ordinance power of governor and you need to compare with pres president here article 123 talks about ordinance power of president article 213 talks about ordinance power of governor here then there is another aspect see there is 42nd constitutional amendment has been done and this according to this amendment the aid and advice on of a council of minister to the president is mandatory he has to accept it but similar uh, provisions is not there with respect to governor there is no mandate mandate aspect on governor with respect to uh, accept the aid and advice given by the council of ministers of state legislature and let's see some of the constitutional discretions also and if there is no confidence he can dissolve the legislative assembly and he can recommend the president rule also if the administration is going against the uh, constitutional provisions or he can reserve the bill for the president uh, assent here and he can appoint any person as a chief minister if there is no majority in the after the election but this person has to show his majority within the six months and then comes he can seek information with respect to administrative information and with respect to legislative information uh, uh, and it is mandatory on uh, chief ministers to provide this information to the governor and he can refuse to say uh, give assent to the ordinary bill also he can withhold the assent also so these are the constitutional discretion given to the governor and let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2014 which of the following are the discretionary powers given to the governor of state Four statement the first statement sending a report to the president of india for imposing a president rule this is true appointing minister there is no constitutional discretion he has to appoint it on the advice of chief minister reserving certain bills by state legislature for the cons consideration of president of india this is also true and making the rules to conduct of business of state government this is false so one and three is the right option here and let's move to the next news the next news is regarding unesco and uh, in 2024 prelims if you look at it there are two questions came in the preliminary examination so this topic is important and what exactly the news is the royal burial mounds of ahom dynasty from assam makes it to unesco world heritage list unesco world heritage list has included one more indian property in the category see unesco world heritage list, there are three categories 
the first category is natural category the second cat category is cultural category and the third category is mixed category and under the cultural category this royal uh, the charai dev mounts this is the charai dev is a uh, one among the districts of assam and these mounts assam burial mounts these are present here so the charai dev moidans these are the place where ahom royals ahom kings and queens their bodies usually they are uh, they follow hindu rituals so the body is cremated it is uh, burned after that the ashes and the bones they are kept in these kind of mounds you can see here these kind of mounds and they have a tradition of doing this almost 17 year or 7 700 year old mound uh, mound burial systems have been identified in assam and these kind of cultural aspects have been included under the UNESCO World Heritage Site, and from Assam, this is the first one comes under uh, cultural category. See, under natural category, already three properties have been included. So, Kaziranga, it is one among the world uh, heritage, uh, one among the property of World Heritage List under UNESCO. Along with that, Kaziranga, we have a Manas also, Manas National Park. These these two the first two are under natural category and there is a now third one third one that is uh, charai dio moidans this is under cultural category two under natural category one under cultural category so 700 year old structures have been included under it so ultimately the ahom dynasty and their legacy have been included so there are two, two aspects you need to remember here one aspect is the consideration or the recognition given to these mounds the assam mounds this is one thing it is because of this recognition this is going to get that uh, respect uh, uh, regarding the home dynasty all these things the second thing is a tourism aspect so one is recognition second one is tourism aspect both can be an advantage with respect to this unesco world heritage yes. so this is what this article is also talking about and another news is this is the 43rd property in our country which have been included under world heritage list category so this is the context of this news article now let me give you guys background information regarding unesco also unesco this is a specialized agency of united nation and this was established in the year of 1945 so objective is to increase the improve the international collaboration in, uh, in the area of education science and culture here and the headquarters is in paris france and there are 195 countries they are member of unesco here and let's see the reports published by unesco global education monitoring report and gender parity index now initiatives are quite important uh, there are some initiatives have been mentioned here out of this the three are important from exam perspective one is world heritage program and this article is talking about this world heritage program then network of creative cities there are eight cities in our country that are included under the network network of creative cities like some city has been included for that art and uh, culture some city has been included for uh, music so these kind of uh, creative cities have been included indian cities have been included and then intangible cultural heritage last year there was a question regarding garba dance that which among the recent uh, addition of into the intangible cultural heritage so these th these three are important but let me focus on world heritage program this article is talking about this only the rest of the things we'll discuss whenever the uh, appropriate news comes to, comes into the picture so world heritage sites so india as of now there are 43 World Heritage. There are forty-three properties have been included under the World Heritage site. So here it has been mentioned at thirty-eight. Data is old. Please ignore the data. And all the three category. I told you that there is a natural category, there is a cultural category, and there is a mixed category. We have properties. We have uh, locations belong to all the three categories. And uh, once it has been placed under the World Heritage site list, then it is going to get that attention. See, proper funding will be given by the government. That is, there are some obligations on the government also to take care of these kind of monuments. So there is a special cultural and physical significance is there with respect to declaring World Heritage Site. And who is going to declare this? The World Heritage Program, and which is administered by World Heritage a Committee. This is the deciding factor, deciding authority of these kind of places here. And let's see previous year question on this particular topic. A uh, question was asked as in this year prelims. Consider the following properties included in the World Heritage List released by UNESCO. Uh, this year, Shanti Niketan and the sacred ensembles of Aisala they are added under the World Heritage List. So only two is the right option here. Let's move to the next news. The next news is regarding Bimstek here. 
and the news is that a uh, few days ago there was a foreign mi ministers summit was held and this was held in delhi foreign minister summit of bimstek so the foreign ministers of all these bimstek countries they met in delhi and they had a discussion and uh, this article has been written the first part of the article it uh, deals with what are the decision or what are the agreements we have signed so this is not that much important but i'll go through with the content but the second part is important and some new points have been mentioned here so what are the advantages of bimstek especially to india so we'll cover from both perspective let's see the first part so what are the decision and what are the discussion happened in the bimstek meet in delhi the main focus was on the security connectivity trade and investment these are the four aspects the, that were discussed during the uh, last month uh, uh, this meet a uh, foreign minister meet here and in the month of september here this foreign ministers of all these bimstek countries they have met so later in the month of september the bimstek leader bimstek summit is going to happen so the uh, president and the prime ministers of all these countries they come together and they are going to have a discussion and one agreement is going to be signed and this agreement is with respect to maritime trans transport cooperation see the main objective is to increase the coordination and the connectivity of all these countries that are in the bimstek i'll give the explanation regarding bimstek also now in that connectivity it talks about roadways it talks about railways and it talks about waterways so already we are focused on a uh, roadways and even uh, the railways also been we are in talks now we are going to sign an agreement with respect to waterways that is maritime transport cooperation it is going to be signed and so it is going to give the regional connectivity factor and uh, i told you that there were discussion in this uh, foreign minister meeting every country uh, nepal myanmar thailand india see all these countries they have given they have announced some of the initi initiation new new uh, steps but you don't have to remember or you don't have to focus on all the announcement done by all the countries let's focus on what exactly india announced and let's stick on to it india the announcement is with respect to health factor india has told that india is opening its india is open for the health related service if you want to come to india for health related aspects the entire process is easy for the bimstek countries and you are going to get a e visa and that will also easy to get and treatment and cancer research all these is uh, india is supporting all these for the bimstek countries so india mainly focusing on the health tourism you can say see it is going to be advantage for india also if these patients comes to india take a treatment in india they are going to contribute financially also so there is a win win situation here one thing there will there will be a co uh, cooperation among these countries along that there will be econo economic advantage also so uh, these are the two aspects uh, what india announced and now let's move with the second part what are the advantages of bring uh, sorry bimstek grouping the first and foremost is the china factor see uh, the role of china or the the presence of china in the bay of bengal it is increasing and it is quite worrying for india so china is always in a position to fill the vacuum wherever india is not there it is try to fill that vacuum in the bay of bengal region so india feels that it is the responsibility by doing these kind of activities foreign ministers meet and these kind of meet it is going to solidify the relation with respect to bay of bengal region to counter the china first thing is to counter the china bimstek plays very important role and another next aspect is north eastern state see north eastern states are landlocked so in order to give the accessibility factor we need to have a better relationship with bangladesh we need to have a better relationship with myanmar so these kind of organizations these kind of uh, functions they are going to give that uh, connection easier the cooperation easier and the third thing it comes regarding indo pacific and indo pacific you know that again the china's role is increasing the aggressive nature of china is extremely visible there even in order to counter the china our relationship with myanmar and our relationship with thailand it's very very important here so it gives an opportunity means it gives an opportunity to extend our cooperation with these countries also and then comes from the perspective of asean see we need to improve our relationship with asean for that thailand has told that we can be a bridge between bimstek especially the and the india and the asean country so for that also thailand and thailand is a part of bimstek so thailand plays very important role and bimstek as an organization plays very important role here and finally india we are working towards neighbor first policy and we are working towards uh, 
act east asia policy act east policy in, in for all these and even sagar initiative for all these things to be success to be successful bimstick plays very important role and these are the advantages of bimstick and let me give you guys background information regarding bimstick also bimstick bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral tech, technical and economic cooperation uh, see uh, it includes seven countries and bangladesh bhutan india nepal sri lanka and we have myanmar and the thailand here so these are the seven countries are the member of uh, bimstick collaboration and this was started in the year of 1997 under the bangkok declaration see the main intention was uh, intention of creating bimstick is for the failure the reason is failure of sark sark we don't have a we did not had a good relationship with pakistan even now we don't have a good relationship with pakistan so always because of that any steps taken by pakistan any step taken by india is rejected by pakistan any step taken by pakistan is rejected by india that tussle was going on because of these uh, enmity enmity between india and pakistan the entire sar it has become stagnant nothing was implementing nothing neither india was not letting nor pakistan was not letting so because of that india decided that stark is a dead horse so it is not going to give us any any development so let us focus on a regional connectivity in order to focus on regional connectivity we need to eliminate we need to remove uh, pakistan from that picture for that we have found a new arrangement new organization that is bimstick so 1997 under the bank of declaration new entity has been new organization has been formed that is bimstick headquarters is in dhaka bangladesh so initially there were six sectors we were mainly focusing on six sector uh, the entire working is restricted to the trade technology energy transport tourism fisheries but later on in 2008 other areas also been included and each country has been designated with one one area and if you look at the india's uh, expertise here india focuses on security india's main area india focuses on security under security we focus on counter terrorism and we focus on uh, transnational crime we focus on narcotics and disaster management and along with energy security also so it is a india's focus area inside the bimstick organization and uh, obviously this uh, very important for india's neighborhood first act east asia policies and uh, let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2022 do you think bimstick is a parallel organization like sark what are the similarities and dissimilarities between the two how are indian foreign policy objectives realized by forming this new organization and let's move to the next news the next news is with respect to asia what is the news in the last uh, article we had a discussion regarding foreign ministers summit of bimstick now there is a foreign minister summit between asean countries and india so asean and india foreign minister summit so here mr jay shankar is attending this asean uh, foreign minister summit and this is happening in the country of laos the capital city of laos this summit is going on and see uh, asean is extremely extremely important for india both geopolitically as well as the economically so this is what even uh, jay shankar also mentioned in this uh, uh, meeting also Uh, the current political economic security cooperation with asean is of utmost priority so is the people to people linkage so we see that how important we we have shown asean how important the asean is even for asean india plays very important role see because of chinese aggression in even asean countries are also not happy with it and these asean countries they believe that there is only one country which can counter uh, china in that region is the india so they also want to have a better relationship with india in order to deal with china even though openly vocally they don't say it but this is the intention behind the entire grouping because of the aggression chinese aggression this is impacting each and every country of asia so somewhere they expect better relationship with india here and here uh, the mr jay shankar also uh, expressed that he also want to develop that uh, relation the, see asean there is a for india's e act east policy asean is a cornerstone i told you that geopolitically china factor and economically also if you look at the largest trading blocks for india the first is european union and the second comes usa and the third highest trade happens with the asean grouping only you can realize that how important asean from the perspective of economic also so mr jay shankar is conveying this to the uh, asean countries also and this is the 
10 years in 2014 we came up with act east policy we came up with neighborhood first policy so it's been 10 years with all these policies and that makes this particular meeting very significant so this is what this uh, article is talking about but let me give you guys background information regarding ASEAN also that would be sufficient ASEAN this is association of southeast asian nations in a regional organization the motto is that one mission one identity and one community the intention is to see all the south asian countries southeast asian countries as a one single unit so this is going to improve the political stability and the social stability as well as the economic stability in a larger perspective so asean is very very important both geopolitically economically as well as the social stability also so asean secretariat is in indonesia in the jakarta city and this was established in the year of 1967 so this was also uh, established under bangkok declaration here and usually the chairmanship of asean rotates annually and it is based on the alphabetical order and uh, this is the background information regarding asean and let's see previous year question on this particular topic question was asked in 2018 consider the following six countries have been mentioned here which of the above are among free trade partners of asean asean has signed free trade partner agreement with countries and which among these six countries they, it has signed the pre-trade partner agreement so australia yes it has signed with canada no it, it has not with china it has with india it has and with uh, japan it has usa it is not so answer is c and let's move to the next news the next news is regarding india usa relationship the news is that india and us we have signed an agreement and uh, what is this agreement agreement is to protect the cultural heritage what exactly this talks about see if uh, any idol or any cultural item that is stolen from india or looted from india and if this item is situated in usa if it is located in usa, USA then that item will be given back to the india the same way if usa items cultural items are looted if they are uh, located in india then india is going to give it back to the usa this is the arrangement and with 29 countries usa has signed this agreement and india also we have signed it so this is a simple agreement the stolen antiquities stolen looted items cultural related items it is it will be returned to their country of origin so this is the news see the background information of india and the usa it is mentioned here i'm not going to uh, cover this topic uh, whenever the uh, significant news comes i'll give the background information also if you want you can go through with the data here and this is it for the day guys this pdf is available in netbook study thank you for listening i'll see you guys tomorrow have a good time